Hey, my name is Leila. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know how many of you know this about me, but I was born in a country that doesn't exist anymore, USSR. Today it looks different, it even goes under a different name of Russian Federation. So today's tutorial will be a little bit nostalgic for me, because we will be drawing this old Soviet spoon made in CCCP. Okay, to start, let's observe the object. Um, now what you can do is you can follow along with me and draw the same spoon or you can grab one of your own and um, you can draw that by following very similar steps to what we'll be doing here. I'm going to draw this spoon, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to spend a little bit of time observing it, you know, so you can see that it's pretty much got a straight line going up and down. You know, that central line that we can put in and base most of our drawing around that. So just make sure that it's nice and straight. You can use a ruler if you really have to. I do think it's good to practice freehand stuff like this. But if you are using a ruler, people have a tendency to really press on the pencil hard. Just keep in mind, this line will be erased once we've finished building everything. So don't do the, uh, you know. Okay, now I'm going to mark the top and the bottom. Now let's have a look and let's measure the spoon. You can do the same thing with the spoon that you're drawing. If I measure this part of the spoon here, like that, so I'm putting this part, part of the pencil to one side and then marking with my fingernail on the other side of the pencil. And let's see if we can, how many times we can fit that in there. So one, and see, almost twice, we just have a little bit of that extra bit of the pencil poking through, so it's almost twice. So let's do this, then say for example, if I mark it here, and let's measure it with a pencil as well, and remember, you can do this with any object, it doesn't even have to be spoon, the spoon, you can just do it with anything else that you're drawing. You see, now I've got extra space here, which means I either need to make my spoon shorter, well, I need to make this a bit bigger, and that's what I'm going to do. So now let's let's measure it up. Yes, and now it's perfect. Just hangs over just a little bit. So I'm going to erase this little mark, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just roughly shaping these things through. So this is like an oval, right? Sort of egg-shaped oval. If you want to, if it's easier, you can actually put an oval and then shape it. Um, I'm just going to put sort of the egg shape straight away. And you know, this is it's not a very hard thing to draw, but it also depends what level you are at. So if you are like a real beginner, you're just trying out, you know, good on you for doing this. Um, but you can, you can go for simpler ways, you can, you know, help yourself with things as well and then as you get more practice and as you start to get better and better then you can do a lot of freehand stuff you know sort of eyeballing things and things like that okay so let's have a look at this bottom part here it's kind of like it's, it's quite thin here and then it widens it widens more on the bottom so I'm gonna make it this sort of a wide and we can also measure it so we can measure this width again with the pencil, like we did, you know, previously. And let's measure it against this um, width. So I've got it one, and a little bit, it's a little bit wider than half of this part. So a bit more than a half, a little bit less than two thirds. So I'd say somewhere here. So now let's measure this distance with the pencil and see if we've got it right. Yep, we've got it quite approximately, but it's quite on point, I think. And then let's connect this with with this width and let's start shaping and building and again remember if you're a beginner and you can't get the exact shape 100 percent you know you go by as close as you can possibly get because remember your personal best is the best level to raise up to you know so if you've done something before and this is better than your previous drawing you have achieved quite a bit 
So it's really hard sometimes to measure up to professional artists, you know, all those really fast um, drawings where it looks like, oh, they've done it in two seconds, and no, they didn't, and they've spent 20 years previously, um, you know, trying things out and having their own little failures, but a lot of people get sort of scared off by things like that, like, oh, it's too hard, I don't think I could do this, so that's why doing these basic things, simple things, can really, really help. It's like one little step at a time. Okay, so now let's have a look at other things that we see there. So we've got the pattern and I will put that in. So it's kind of like an oval sort of a shape in there. So I'm just going to place that. And then I'm going to start um, adding. I'll actually grab thinner pencil. So it's one of the mechanical ones. And these little sort of a bit, bits and pieces. You don't need to, like, there are lots of details in there. You don't need to get it to the point where you can see every single little thing. But you do want to give a feeling of this specific pattern. And a little bit on the other side. And here, that's a funny little pattern. It's a very Soviet looking one. <laughs> So I've got these petal-like formations. Okay, so that's done. There's a little bit of pattern going on there as well. But it's because it's such an old spoon as well, a lot of it has been quite flattened by use, continuous use. Yeah, that should be enough. Now we need to go in and um, look at the lights and the shadows. Probably even better if I just put it on the side there. That'll give me better, more interesting highlights. Okay, let's see. I have a highlight on the side. So a stronger, probably the strongest highlight. So I'm going to very gently mark that. Don't mark the really hazy ones, but do mark the really strong ones or areas of shadow. So this is, for me, this is the area of shadow and one here. This is the darkest shadow over there. Now also this part is, is in a bit of a shadow and then this here catches some light and the side. Another thing I want you to pay attention to, I'll actually bring that back and um, you know, there's also a thickness to the spoon. I don't know if you can see that. I'll just, uh, yeah, there. See that little highlight there? Now that highlight there, that catches that ridge on the side. So make sure that if you can see your ridges, sometimes they can be in the shadow. And usually if you've got a highlight here, you will get a shadow there. Or vice versa, if you've got a really strong shadow here, you'd probably be catching a bit of light on that. Make sure to include that as well. You can include that now or you can do it a little bit later. So my one is somewhere there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to almost completely erase that part because later on I would need to leave a little um, a little white sort of a highlight. And same on the side. Always check you might have some highlights on the side as well. Now let's mark our shadow through as well. So if you are working on your own composition, on your own spoon, um, just make sure and see where is your light direction coming from. So if your light is hitting that way, what's happening on my um, little spoon here, I'm getting the shadow on this opposite side. So. And again, I don't want to press too hard because I, you know, I want to be able to smudge those out if I need to. So now we've got the basic spoon sketch. No shadows, nothing yet, but everything mapped out. And this is the stage where we can start shading. So I'm going to start with a 6B pencil. So you can, 4B or, you know, 8B would, would work in a similar way. Um, if you would like to know more about pencils and things, I do have a tutorial where I discuss all graphite materials as well. 
and I will link that um, down below as well. So if you're interested, you can watch that video too. And another darker area is here. I'm starting with some of the darker areas, but I am not going full strength just yet. I just want to sort of map them up a map them out a little bit further. I'm going to leave the pattern for now and not worry too much about it. We can get back to it later. Okay, so now I'm going to um, use a smudge stick because I want to create a really soft sort of a, a look to the spoon, but um, if you're happy with just doing cross etching, feel free to do that as well. Cross etching things can also be really beautiful. But please don't smudge with your fingers. You can get away doing that with charcoals and soft pastels, but not graphite materials. They're just too thin for that. Also, at this stage, uh, mark our shadows. This is 8B, so we can create the shadow. Make sure that you are observing your own shadow, you know, the one that you've got um, if you are working on your own object, because you would get different variations. And usually, when the shadow is closer to the object, it becomes just a little bit darker. And when it gets further away from it, it becomes a little bit soft and a little bit light and I can see that same thing happening here where here the shadow is just a bit darker and here it just hazes out very very softly but having said that as well there are some situations when depending on the kind of light that you've got that things can be a little bit different because a lot depends not just on your light source or the position of your light source but also on what kind of a light source it is if it's a lamp you're going to get one result if it's a window it's a very different light so sometimes you know people would look at things and say oh no this this highlight is wrong but the thing is it would be wrong if this highlight was coming from the window but if someone had a torch shining at it at a very close distance that's exactly what you would see that's why it's so important to look at your composition and study 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 it just try and notice little bits and pieces that that can make a lot of difference with so same thing i can see the same thing happening here as well so as the shadow moves closer to the object the the shadow becomes darker more intense and we can see a little bit more um, contrast and definition as well so it becomes a bit sharper right and now we can do the same thing and give it a nice quick smudge going to take that shadow down a bit because for some reason I brought it up a bit too high, smudged it out of control. Okay, there yeah, that's better. And I'm also actually going to lighten this as well. So this is, I'm using a petty rubber. Um, again, I will link I'll put a link to the video where I talk about all these materials down below. Okay, 
So now let's go back. So now I'm going back with this pencil because I want to get all the details. You know that those ridges I was talking about? This is what I'm going to be looking for. So now this ridge here at this, at this part is quite dark because it's in shadow. But this ridge here catches quite a bit of light, so... I'm going to put a separate line there to make it easier for me to define it and not, you know, not go over it with my pencil. And then there's a shadow. It's quite dark. Okay. So we can just keep going with all the shading. There's shadow on that side. And it looks quite dark here, but I've gone too far out. Okay, and then here it becomes just a little bit lighter. And I'm going to pick some of the 6B pencil. Let's add a little bit of the shadow. So I'm not outlining them. I'm only creating shadow on the side where the shadow naturally falls so at this stage the spoon looks like a spoon and you've got the shadows and the lights but at the moment if you look at it it kind of looks almost a little bit plasticky and the reason for this is because we didn't go all out on our contrast because some of the shadows are so much darker and we've got a lot of the little sort of a highlighted reflections that we'd be able to bring in once we add our dark shadows so let's do this now actually I will go for even a darker pencil 9B but whatever, whatever the darkest pencil you've got would work and you can start adding these dark areas and you see how the more um, different different shadows that we add the more this does to look like a spoon. And then there's a really, really dark one here. It's probably the darkest that I can go. It's along that side. And it sort of uh, hazes out. Let's have a look at shadows that we've got on the actual handle there. So this part catches quite a bit of light. We'd have to pick some of that graphite off as we keep working on it. Just a bit of a shadow on the side. But this part here starts to catch a little bit of a shadow and that shadow is reasonably strong. Maybe not like this there, but very similar to sort of this area here. So you know how when we were measuring um, the size to make sure that we get the right size? Now you can also measure your shades as well. So you can compare like, for example, when you look at your object and you say, okay, this shadow is a very similar shade to this. And then you just cross reference and make sure you get it to that same point. And then later on, if you need to shade that darker, you can do the same in this area too. That's why I say your object is never finished until the whole thing is finished because you 
find yourself often going back and forth, adding more shadows, highlights, because of the constant change, you know? Darker there. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with my little smudge stick. I'm just gonna go in with Now I am going to start to add more of the little highlights and you know little highlights that you might not necessarily that might not necessarily catch your eye straight away because things like this one here this is something that you see immediately but there are also lots of other um, highlights you might even get a reflection of this highlight in the spoon if it's sort of shaped in the right way so there would be more places that you would need to lift a little bit of the graphite off your paper. Making some things a bit lighter. I can see a little line there. Just a little bit there. Also these lines they're already a little bit light but I think we need to Make them a bit stronger. Comes out on the side. Make this a bit lighter too. Now let's have a look at the pattern. If you are working on the spoon that just has pattern etched in, you know, sometimes you find spoons like that. I've seen quite a few. Um, you can just use your pencil and just draw the pattern as is because this spoon has pattern that stands out we need to make sure that we add appropriate highlights as well so I'm just going and I'm picking off some of these little bits like that just a bit more here and here so we don't want to make this so prominent that it takes over the whole drawing, you know, but you do want to put those things in. Now let's add some highlight on this side. And a little bit of the highlight on that side there, because it's catching the light. Now I'm gonna go in with my um, mechanical pencil. You can draw without using mechanical pencils, I just find that you spend half the time sharpening your pencils. And this is just so perfect because it just keeps that shape. Probably wouldn't use it for large areas of shading, but for things like this, it's really good. Just a bit more definition on some of the shadows. I also have a couple of I think they were meant to be these squiggles slash leaves of some sort. But it is such a common pattern that was used on cutlery in the Soviet Union. So deepening some of the shadows, falling shadow as well. And you see now I'm sort of just going and I'm checking different parts that maybe are a bit darker or a little bit lighter to sort of bring in that, you know, that contrast in some areas that I think still maybe not up to the level that I want it to be. If you dislike working on really small details like what I'm doing now, 
you always have another option you can just draw your spoon bigger so then all of these shadows all of these tiny little shadows become much larger as well because you're working in proportion and that way you can you know get away from doing these details but in my opinion details are fun but I do know that everyone has their own preference so we're almost there now we can just tidy some more things up smooth some areas and also let's just intensify a couple of more shadows to me they just seem a bit stronger than they are here just you know just to go all in kind of a thing back on my mechanical pencil So you see the thing is, remember how when we started, we started with very vague shapes and then we defined the shapes uh, to make them a bit more exact and then same thing happens with the shadows. We start with really vague shadows and then the more we get into the details, the more we can shape them uh, to go according to the shape of the spoon, the texture of the spoon. Some tiny little details that we can add at this stage already. And again, I'm just trying to get this part of the shadow because it's closer to the object. And when I'm looking at my spoon, it's it's quite, you know, quite dark, quite contrasted. All the things that I was mentioning before. So I'm just trying to, because we're almost finished. I'm just trying to bring that bring that and make sure that it is there in the right way and same here and now last but not least I'm going to use this rubber you can use um, something like this you know just any vinyl rubber uh, would do but if you're going for little tiny details make sure that you uh, make sure that you have a nice sort of a sharp edge and you can achieve that by just cutting a little piece off again if you want to know more about it just watch that graphite materials video the only downside of this rub is that you know it produces these erasing little bits that stick to the paper but it's perfect for cleaning up little bits like that at the end of your drawing even if it's a little one like that always go over um, highlights highlighted areas with your eraser because during the process of your drawing you're constantly carrying graphite from one area to the other even if you're not you know smudging it actively smudging it there'll still be some cross-contamination where else do we have? Um, okay, so I think you guys are still getting a little bit of glare so see if I, if I move it like this 
you can see what it looks like. It's really hard to get away from having, you know, that glare and light reflecting off graphite, especially when it's quite dense. And now we can go back and correct some of the shadows as well. So just some of the darker shadows can go over them and really intensify them if we need to. Okay, there it is, our little spoon. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I really do hope that you followed along because as the time progresses we will move on to a more difficult stuff. Don't forget to subscribe, press notification bell, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and also check out my Patreon. And as always, thank you so much for drawing with me.